check this dude out over here, man. Check Hello, him out. What's this He's ugly. Yo! Hey, man! <laughs> check him out, Hello, man. man. What's his deal? I don't know. You can't bust me without being able to talk or something. <laughs> hey, man! <laughs> How's your fishing, man? <laughs> you got any fish? Welcome to Hello, This is the Doom Show. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Richard, and I am here with Jeffrey, who is clearly on his water skis. Richard, are you going to be a butthole this podcast, or are you going to let me drink? <laughs> I think uh, since we're on episode like 204 or 3, there's a good chance I'm going to be a butthole. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, there's a coach. good chance I'm going to drink. I'll just call you coach. Folks, we are here in our summer. We, this is the most summery summer movie that ever happened to, in the summertime. Mm -hmm. We're doing our summer of SOV shot on video <laughs> crapola. I mean, awesome movies. Whoops. And uh, <laughs> we're talking about Blood Lake 1987. Ow, ow, ow. See, the thing is, folks, in Florida... We only have about a week where it isn't summer all year long, and uh, it's still hot So compared to other places. So this movie feels like the most real thing we've ever <laughs> talked about. This is just my reality played out. Well, up here in New York, we only have blood lakes. <laughs> Nothing goes to waste. No. I love <laughs> we it. recycle it. <laughs> I found a trailer for Blood Lake. It's the AGFA. Is that, is that how they say it? Or is... AGFA, yeah. Of the AGFA. Uh, mm -hmm. they, they showed this movie. Uh, they, did they release the DVD or? Yeah. Uh, it was Bleeding Skull plus AGFA, yeah. Mm. I have a little trailer from them. I really wish this had a retro, like, the OG trailer because it's like, I just want that voiceover guy. I don't even know <laughs> who he is. I just want a voiceover guy. That, we know that guy. Exactly. He's uh, Dea for Nida's cousin, <laughs> which this is real Nida. This is an oppressive Nida. <laughs> this is what's happening on the screen, Nida. This anyway, is, yeah. <laughs> here's the trailer for Blood Lake. Uh, is this a party house or what? It's going to be a killer. Hey, Mike, you going to be a butthole this weekend or are you going to let me drink? <laughs> Good luck, baby. I got my beard, my sex partner. I'm fine. I know you have the DVD, sir. You are bragging. You're waving it at me. Yeah. You know how, how some people like to, in their music videos, have huge like rolls of bills that they yeah. throw in your face? I just take 
SOV DVDs and do the same thing. I'm like, look at all my DVDs. These should be on tape, but instead they're on DVD. <laughs> just rub them in your armpits, just like the <laughs> rappers do. I get it. So I have found a photograph of the Blood Lake VHS uh, from U- United Entertainment. Mm-hmm. It says it's 90 minutes. Uh, this movie is no. not 90 minutes. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, here, here's what the uh, back of the United <laughs> Entertainment. <laughs> I, I just want to say I love how they could just lie. They could say, like, oh, yeah, this, it's 90 minutes. We'll round it up. We don't care. <laughs> and who would have been upset? Was there a law that you had to say it was 90 minutes? Was it like one of those loopholes? Because the DVD says it's 82 minutes. So that's rounding, rounding way up. Because seriously, I... <laughs> Especially now, when I look at a freaking movie and go to watch it, if it's under 85 minutes, I am stoked. It already has points going towards it. Like, I was like, yay, you're short. Because, you know, I'm old and I don't want to waste my life watching a movie. Yeah, that's like an automatic, oh yeah, I'll watch that now. (laughs) Which is weird, I don't like short films. (laughs) Like, I won't watch a 15-minute horror short movies. I'm like, no, eh, it's a short film. Mm. What is that? <laughs> well, there's there's a sweet spot, you know? Yeah. That, like, 70 to 85-minute mark. Once it gets to 90, I'm like, oh, I don't know if I have the time. This movie's 15 minutes. It's going to be all jump scares or one big jump scare yeah. related yeah. <laughs> to yeah. someone turning their, their bedside lamp on. And and then, like, Mm. a head turning very quickly. (laughs) Yeah. No, thank you. I think I just explained why I don't watch short films. Anyway, here's what the VHS for Blood Lake says. A quick dip in the lake turns into a blood bath of horror. Six teenagers are looking forward to a weekend of partying, sex, and all-around fun. But before the party has even started, one couple disappears. Only... (laughs) Wait, wait, wait. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Only to be found murdered. Those those dudes were a couple. That's hot. No, okay, they're not part of the six. Like there are six <laughs> people who go to the cabin and then they meet two others. Okay, but, I, but I like the idea. I mean, oh boy, I feel like that makes a lot of sense if they're a couple. Though we'll talk that's about beautiful. why. We'll talk yeah. about it's them. beautiful too. Yeah. One couple disappears only to be found later brutally murdered. Mm-hmm. A bloodthirsty killer is stalking their summer playground one by one. Bodies begin to turn up on the beach, in the boat. The vacationers become prey to the venomous vengeance-seeking maniac. There's only one person left to kill the killer or be killed. There's nowhere to hide. Who will come out alive? (laughs) So I think that that one was mostly accurate, which is better than we usually get. Mm -hmm. I'm glad it doesn't mention the, the invisible snake. I, I don't know if it was invisible. It could be real. <laughs> Lake snakes, you know? For some reason, before I watched this movie, I thought it was a Florida movie. I don't know why. <laughs> so if I accidentally start mentioning how, yeah, that's how Florida is, just just let it go. <laughs> even though this is Oklahoma? Yeah, it is Oklahoma. And that's, I think, the crazy thing is that I watched this movie and I'm like, oh, this is a New York movie. <laughs> I feel like it's just the all-American SOV slasher. Dude, it is. It is. Yeah. Oh, God, it feels too real. Like, I know these people. I've <laughs> I know these, these people, too. I've Fuck. been to this, like, lake house with these people. <laughs> I feel like the thing is, what you need to get out of your head, if you've never seen this movie before, what you need to understand is that it's less of a movie and more of a home movie. It's it's like this wonderful travelogue of uh, the experiences of these six people when they go to a cabin and just fuck around and do nothing of interest or importance for a weekend, a week. I don't, no, it's like a weekend, right? It's not very long. This is Herzog's Lost Documentary. <laughs> Fata Morgana. <laughs> he needs to narrate this. That'd be the best. <laughs> He takes the hedge clippers to the pathetic bushes. (laughs) It is not going to help. How many joints must they roll before they realize there is no point to existence? (laughs) All right, let's get started before I break out that terrible Werner Herzog impression. 
<laughs> no, it was good. It was good. I liked it. Oh, thank you. So we start with some hot gardening action. We got this sexy ass gardener doing some gardening, and uh, he gets rudely interrupted by the killer. Yeah, we meet the killer right away. And the killer is, I think, very interestingly, for the period, humanized. He is not made like a supernatural force, or even like a particularly, I don't know, deranged force. He is, he has a particular agreement, which is that (laughs) we find out later, and we kind of have the sense now, he was the previous owner of the land that this lake house resides on. And he sold it to the father of one of the characters we'll be meeting fairly soon. And apparently he was stiffed for the for the money, which I don't know wow. how that works. I don't know how you sell a property <laughs> without ever seeing like a check. Uh, maybe the check bounced. I don't know. It's bizarre. But he, he's really mad that he, <laughs> he was driven off of his land by a false promise. And so... Our killer is really like a death to landlords fellow (laughs) who is gone beyond that because he doesn't know. I guess he just (laughs) rather than going to find uh, this person who ripped him off. He's just like, well, I'm just going to squat here and I'll just kill anybody who comes on here, even if it is a gardener. (laughs) Ah, man, this God, it's so good. It's so. Oh, geez. From the moment we see this first kill, the, the like when the guy is like, just the interaction between them, it is so beautiful and sudden and has delivered as flatly as possible. Everything in this movie just <laughs> happens. Super flat, yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> well, yeah. the 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 gardener's just like, hey, man. I don't know. I just work here. And the killer's like, that was good enough for me. And then starts stabbing. (laughs) (laughs) It's good enough for all of us. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I feel like that's, that should be the tagline of the movie. Good enough for me. Immediately we cut to our credit sequence here. Uh, And my favorite genre of freaking music, which is (laughs) cruddy metal with saxophone. As if like a bunch of crappy metal, which is almost just hard rock, but it's it's got those good like those guitar yeah. solos, this heavy metal guitar solos. But the whole thing is all the coolness, all the toughness is thrown out the <laughs> fucking window with that slayer of saxophone. Just <laughs> oh, it's like East Street Band meets fucking garbage metal. It's so good. And the band's name is Voyager, um, <laughs> which is so good. That feels oh. like a name like. I honestly am uh, shocked that they got this name. Like that feels like a name that would have been called by somebody who was actually famous earlier. Exactly. <laughs> uh, they are they're the Star Trek metal band. I love them. Um, but the song is called "Throughout the Night," I uh-huh, think. Uh-huh. And holy shit, dude, it is it is a uh, our new national anthem, boy. Yeah, they wrote a few songs for this film, and all of yes. them are are bangers. <laughs> Uh, and mash the uh the i guess the lead songwriter of voyager i didn't write down his last name because his his first name was killing me it's stephen lee but in quotation marks which is very confusing because i'm wondering is lee his middle name and if that's the case why does he need the quotation marks around stephen lee like That's gorgeous. <laughs> like that leads me to assume that his name is Steven and the Lee just kind of got lopped on there, but it's not <laughs> actually his middle name. I don't know. Everything's confusing. <laughs> Voyager. Ah, oh, so we get the the, the road fun uh, credit <laughs> sequence with our, our 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 heroes here. And I'm like, first of all, what font is this? It looks like Cooper Black or something. It's like this ridiculous font that was not cool ever, except on maybe like <laughs> your your kids' softball team, uh, you know, summer of 87 clip show. Oh my God, it's so good. I mean, this is um, Birdemic levels of credit yes. of credit driving scenes. It's a little bit more high octane than what we get in something like <laughs> Birdemic, 
um, like it's kinetic, you know, it feels like there's movement, like they're actually <laughs> moving forward. But yeah, so I learned from the commentary track that the uh, producer slash star of this film, Doug Barry, um, insisted upon this uh, <laughs> this opening sequence because they really had to get to 80 minutes. Uh, right. <laughs> it was really important to them oh. that they reach that mark. There's there's a few moments where that happened. <laughs> no, all of <laughs> we the moments. Need to get... Oh yeah, so we didn't mention uh, this is directed by uh, Tim Boggs, mm-hmm. who was a sound guy. Yeah, still working. It looks like, mm-hmm. or at least up until 2019. Yeah, very prolific TV career and a little bit in film too. He uh, he worked on Lost Highway as the ADR supervisor. Um, uh oh. Yeah. Oh, we got uh-huh. a freaking David Lynch connection. <laughs> well, that's uh, it's important to point those things out. Always. But other other good stuff like, you know, Demon Knight, the Tales from the Crypt movie, uh nice. Dark Man 2 and 3. Uh <laughs> that night. Thank you. Mania Cop 3 was one of his early works uh, as a sound editor. Um mm. lots of good stuff. Oh, Blank Check, that's a great one from uh 1994. <laughs> The uh, the Disney uh, I took I took a check from Miguel Ferrer and now I'm gonna go um, like make out with a 30 year old woman movie. What? Oh, that's right. <laughs> I forgot that existed. It's really I was good. Thinking, movie. Really, I, good. I thought it was like a Wayans movie at, at first, and then I clicked yeah. on. I was like, I was like, no, 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 no. Oh, this no. is this is oh, something no. I've actually heard of. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Uh, and this was written and produced by and starring Doug Barry, who plays Mike. We'll get to Mike for sure. very soon. For sure. So we got a Thunderbird. Uh, I like. I wrote in my notes that we have a Thunderbird towing a boat, and inside this Thunderbird is the whitest white bread you've ever seen. This is the Wonder Bread <laughs> cast here. Oh boy, they're on their way to the picturesque and scenic. Dare I say, historic mm. Cedar Lake. Ooh, yeah, they're all very white. One <laughs> of them, uh, one, I can't. I guess it's maybe Brian. I'm not positive. He has a real Bill Paxton energy to me. Uh, I could see that. I could see that. Doug Barry, aka Mike. I, I don't know if I really get anything from him. Everybody here, like, even if they don't have a mullet, like one of our characters has a mullet. The rest don't. But it feels like. It's just a mullet in progress, right? Like it's growing out. Give it time. It'll be there. <laughs> just a uh, a future partier. <laughs> yes. Just like little little Tony. Well, cur- currently they are business in the front, but soon <laughs> they will be partying in the back. Uh, see, I don't know if your copy has this. Uh, my copy has uh, freaking tracking issues. Like right as the oh. credits are coming to a close, I got some nice... Uh, some roll from the VHS player. Oh man! Well, that... you need to pick up Ooh. this DVD because the DVD. I mean, it still looks like shit, but it looks better than you might expect. <laughs> On the, um, I think it was the commentary track. Uh, the director says that when they brought it to, when they brought the the master tapes to be transferred for the DVD, uh, the person doing it said like this was the cleanest uh, tape track they've ever seen. Wow. I mean that yeah the DVD looks pretty good besides the fact that it still looks like Blood Lake <laughs> but you can't avoid that no no uh, we get to the, the lake house we f- we find out to our amazement the viewers that the lake house is rocking bro uh, a lot of people are they refer to the lake house as being cool they say this is cool they go inside and they're like yeah this is cool lots of this is cool. Uh, let's see. We got Mike, Becky, Brian, Kim, Tony, and Susan. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to talk about uh, the two lovers. I mean, the, the the two the couple, as intimated by the VHS tape, Dennis and Chuck. We'll get to them <laughs> later. Yeah, they they they're not here yet. This crew is like six of the best actors <laughs> we have ever talked about on the history of Hello, This Is the Doom Show. Even if we were to do. <laughs> A documentary where people are essentially being themselves, this group of people would still be the best actors ever. There are moments where I literally forgot I was watching a movie. Yeah, because it's real life. Yeah. Oh my god, uh-huh. it's fucking hilarious. <laughs> we immediately get the, the star of the show, who I think is Little Tony. 
For sure, he's the protagonist. He's also the damsel in distress. <laughs> um, and he's also a little pervert. Oh, God. The couple, Mike and Becky, Brian and Kim, they're all about the same age. They're like, you know, early 20s, late teens, but I'm guessing early 20s. Sure. Frickin' Tony and Susan are like at, at the absolute oldest. They must be 13. Yeah, 13, 14. Yeah, definitely. Susan seems like she's 11, but that's just the way she acts. She acts yeah. younger than I think she is, but that doesn't stop Lil Tony <laughs> from flirting with her in the most nauseating garbage way possible. <laughs> and at first people are discouraging him, and then immediately they stop dis- discouraging and just encourage him, and they're teasing him. But it sounds like they're trying to hook these two up. And I could not be more repulsed. And the movie, the movie sort of implies that they do hook up. It's very confusing and not disgusting. In my book. Not, not in my <laughs> fucking world worldview. That shit didn't happen. They, they, they just talked. Okay, <laughs> passed out face down in the carpet during my favorite moment, where I was like, "Where, where are Tony and Susan? Oh, and they're just on the floor, <laughs> fucking." Here's the thing about little little Tony, which is weird because that implies that there is a big Tony, but his brother Mike is not named Tony. Is their father named Tony? And if so, why was the second son named Tony? I need to know more. <laughs> anyway, little Tony is a little little bastard. Uh, he he has he, oh my god, he's like a gremlin. He's like a human gremlin. <laughs> I mean, but but the thing about him is that you 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 despise him, but there's a part of him like, yeah, you go, little Tony, you you, you keep doing your thing. Um, I learned something really, I think, revealing and at the same time totally unsurprising from the uh, the commentary track, which was that well, a lot of the uh, actors in the film are friends of the writer and producer Doug Barry, but not all of them. And Little Tony was not. Little Tony, who's played by Travis Crasser, uh, was actually <laughs> just like a notable neighborhood personality in Oklahoma. Uh, he oh my God. was notable for. Uh, having a reputation for sitting on his porch and flipping off cars as they drove by. <laughs> and based on that alone, they recruited him to be in this film. Oh, it's beautiful. He's like the he's oh. like the Jason Muse of Oklahoma. Wow. Hey, Muse. Muse. Come on. He's the he's the he is the muse of uh Blood Lake, yeah. True. So they're they're talking people are calling people coach. Uh, someone talks about doing the pretzel. Well, when you boys grow up to be men like I am, you don't worry about it. You just do the pretzel and your problem's over. The what do you do? (laughs) Never mind. Okay, so I do have some information about this too. Within the context of the film, this makes no sense. Is it little Tony has to go to the bathroom, right? Yes. Yeah, um, so he is told by, I think it's by Mike, that, you know, hurry up, go to the bathroom, go go in there, and do the pretzel and your problem's over. We wonder, like, what does that mean? What's the pretzel? How do you do it? How does it solve the fact that you need to go to the, the bathroom? Um, apparently, doing the pretzel, there. this is the craziest part of all, and I learned this all from the commentary. There was a script to this movie. I know it doesn't seem like there was, but there wow. was a script to this movie. Wow. And it had some additional lines that apparently they forgot to film, or <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Or they're just avoided. A pretzel is taking your member and tying it into a knot so you don't have to pee anymore. I don't know. That is not what I was thinking. That's insane. (laughs) Yeah, anything you could possibly think of would probably be more rational than that. (laughs) So... (sighs) Uh, We get the line, the immortal line. Hey, Mike, you're going to be a butthole, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. I'm going to drop the whole thing in here. Because I started to write it down, and it was more elaborate than I thought. It's, it's beautiful. But mm-hmm. uh, things you got to understand about this movie. People are making the, the not-so-occasional intimation of uh, calling each other gay, calling each other other homophobic slurs, uh, challenging each other's manhood, always, always... Talking about their conquests of women, <laughs> real or imagined. I'm gonna have sex with your girl. I'm gonna do derp, it. Derp a derp. Like it's Tonight. 
Oh, it happens so much that if you took all of it out, this movie really would not exist without this hazing and like like just just picking on each other and it it feels ridiculously familiar and human <laughs> it's just like flashbacks to yeah. when i was a teenager <laughs> hanging exactly. out with people like this that is a hundred percent agree that is just <sighs> what teenage years were like at the lake house yeah hey mike you're gonna be a butthole this weekend or are you gonna let me drink a butthole i don't care if you drink just don't go crazy on us. Don't tell mom and dad I let you. No problem. I can handle that. Uh, famous last words. The the first of the 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 really terrifying, dare I say, chilling, <laughs> is when they find out there's fresh food in the refrigerator. Literally, the food is chilling in the refrigerator. Now, <laughs> Becky, whose parents own this cool lake house, uh, they have not been there since Memorial Day, uh, so she can't figure out why. There's still fresh food in the fridge, so Strange. dun dun dun. Here's an interesting factoid: uh, Angela Darter, who plays Becky, her parents actually own the lake house, and that is how <laughs> she is in the movie. So realistic. <laughs> um, her brother Michael Darter is uh, Dennis of the oh. uh, our favorite couple, Dennis and Chuck. Nice. Yeah, there was the stipulation was you have to cast our children in your movie <laughs> if you want to film at our lake house. Yeah, See, but she's uh, she's fine. I mean, she's yeah. probably the best one here, right? Exactly. She seems like the most likely to have been in another movie. Yeah, but not true. N- but not I mean, so much. <laughs> seems possible. Uh, so uh, they throw the food away, and Mike is throwing the this this bag of food in the garbage, and he hears this fly buzzing sound effect coming from the shed that's attached to the house there, and he goes to open it, and it's locked. What could be in that shed? Oh. Bum, bum, bum. Then we get a jarring moment where there's a body in the water. Little Tony, look out! <laughs> That's what my notes say. I'm, I'm refreshing my memory. So they run down to see this body, and sure enough, it's uh, it's their pal Brian pretending to be dead. And uh, he grabs little Tony and pulls him in the water, and everyone's screaming. Everyone is screaming and talking at once. Dude, dude, get used to it, all right? <laughs> get used to everyone talking at once. Get used to... My favorite thing in this movie is whoever's standing closest to the camera gets to be the <laughs> loudest. And, or who's closest to the mic gets to <laughs> yeah, be the Yeah, that's loudest. simply how microphones work, yeah. <laughs> it's usually someone who's not on camera. Mm-hmm. Usually they had everyone gather around like it would be real. And so either Becky or Kim or whoever is just super loud while everyone else is just having this melee of bullshit happening. I mean, pretty surprising that the uh, director went on to be largely a sound person. <laughs> Because <laughs> we're not seeing it here. The the trivia was they had one mic for this this whole shoot, and I'm like, it, it's surprising it's this clear what's going on. Uh, after getting pushed in the water by Lil Tony, uh, Mike makes some empty threats, and then uh, there's just so much flirting between male characters, and then we cut to the nostalgic piano playing as the sun sets, and it's just beautiful, man. Unfortunately, we come back to the male characters talking on the dock. They're talking about the ladies. I wrote in my notes, yuck. They're talking about tearing it up and who can Ooh. tear it up. And somebody comments that, you know, uh, little Tony it sure has a mouth. Um, and then they, they see, they spot in the <laughs> near distance, our killer who is hanging out on a dock. Not their dock, but another dock that's like, I don't know, like... 20 feet away their improv here is honestly it's it's for the books they don't really know what to say they can't come up with any insults uh one of them asks what's his deal after getting uh well one of them tries to say that but gets cut off by the improv of somebody else and then eventually they get to like recognizing there's a man fishing on the dock near them and one of them asks what's his deal and the response is he's ugly and then they say, hey, man, and then they start laughing hysterically. And then they say, how's the fishing, man? Got any fish? And then they laugh hysterically. 
<laughs> that's all they got. <laughs> oh boy. And it just, you don't need anything else. That's exactly what it would have happened in real life. It's so ridiculous. I mean, that is, that is the sort of, uh, <laughs> the sort of insults that inspire murderous oh rampages, God. right? So Becky's worried about where the, the frickin' gardener is. And then all of a sudden, two more lake bums show up. Dennis and Chuck. Oh boy. Like I just I was like we can't have more characters and then we have more characters. <laughs> so here's the thing about Dennis and Chuck, our couple, our primary couple, and unfortunately <laughs> like our our primary victims too. Yeah. Uh Dennis and Chuck, the thing that's interesting about them which you would not expect from a movie like this is that they we first introduced to them when all of the the boys go back to the cabin and they uh, run into the girls again. Um, but Dennis and Chuck have been talking to the girls for a while, presumably. And the thing that's interesting to me is that there's no sort of like intimation that, that the, uh, the, the returning boys are at all threatened by right. this. They don't right? care. No, they're just like, hey, Dennis and Chuck, I, we don't know you, but you're our friends now. Want to come skiing with us tomorrow i think that's pretty cool i think they're just like yeah dennis and chuck we like these guys yeah they're the age range is like these guys are definitely like you know late teens early mid teen like beavis and butthead age you know but it's just it is so weird that was something else that struck me too was like they don't know these guys yet yeah y- y'all are cool you seem like the type you know and i think Maybe as long as you're willing to, and this is a Florida thing, if you're willing to either get on a boat, (laughs) fish, lay out in the sun, take in some rays, or hop on a jet ski, do these things, you're in. If you happen to be super misogynistic and have a beer permanently super glued to your hand, dude, you're in. (laughs) I wish I'd known these things at the time. You could have been in all along. Been, I should have just been throwing a football every time people saw me. Just have like a like a someone handing me footballs to throw. It would be all good to go. Uh, so Becky's dad calls and uh, he wants them to change the locks, which we don't realize is because he never paid for this fucking property. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and uh, Becky has my freaking favorite line, which is basically something's going on around here. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> Oh my god. So the, the ladies of course are tasked with making dinner because that is the law of the jungle. <laughs> the women folk. Yep, they they make dinner uh, a uh, nondescript plates with food substances on plates. <laughs> and uh th- their way of thanking the ladies for a delicious meal is, well, I guess we should compliment you, but we're not gonna <laughs> Well, then they, they sort of undermine that by uh, after dinner saying, <laughs> uh, well, here's the best part of dinner. Beer. You can't ruin it. <laughs> oh, fuck. We, we get some talk about uh, Tony's uh, notorious reputation with the ladies. <laughs> I mean, when you have the, when you're like 13, 14 and you already have the, uh, uh, the nickname Lil Pervert, it's oh, probably not no. good. Probably no, not good. no. It's so horrible. I knew this kid. Like, <laughs> I didn't know this kid, but I knew this kid. I know everyone knows this kid. <laughs> We've all got one, Lil Tony. Lil Tony in our lives. Uh, so, one thing we learn is that every lake house has a spitting grandma. <laughs> On the wall. So this is really interesting. Yeah, there's a spitting grandma. It looks like this. I mean, I described it in my notes as the cackling, pulstering witch kitchen decoration. Um, It spits out little bits of water. There's a whole line of these things. They are called laughing heads. L-A-F-F-U-N space head. Uh, You can find some of them for sale on eBay right now if you want. Uh, they're all about 50 bucks. Uh, they don't seem worth it. I would, oh. however, if I ever come across the particular one used in this film, I will immediately <laughs> purchase it. And will I regret it? I don't know, but I will yes. hang it up in my kitchen for sure. So you pull, uh, the, ch- you pull the chain. You, it's just like a babushka or whatever, like a little yeah. uh, a head a headscarf, and you pull it, and it laughs and then spits in your face, and that's the thing. 
tasteful decoration. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Right after that, it's it's time for us to take a break and smoke a bong full of marijuana joints we rolled. We get the first of lots of weed talking. Mike tells an amazing story about having weed dick, where he smoked too much weed and then couldn't perform for a girl, and then she never spoke to him again. And I have a feeling that him not being able to get it up was the least <laughs> of the reasons why she didn't speak to him. She may have been relieved. Like, oh, it's not working? Thank you, God. Mm -hmm. uh, and I wrote my notes that every time uh, Tony flirts with uh, Susie or Susan, whatever her name is, uh, my, yeah. my soul shatters. Yeah, Susan seems so innocent, so young, so... <sighs> So annoying. scared by snakes. So, so, so annoying. <laughs> uh, uh, she does have one of my favorite lines of dialogue, which is, Aw, oh, shut up, little Tony. Oh, my God. We're going to hear, if you just have to hear the pitch and, and the, 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 the timber of this little girl's voice, it's wonderful. So then we get the killer stalking, right? the nice killer vision. Uh, it's, the, it's like a little bit of a POV, and you've got this uh, filter that kind of makes everything look crazy, and they drop in the first of many, many fart synth sounds. <laughs> There's just some ass blast of synth. Oh, my God. See, here's the thing. I would love to own this score on vinyl. Um, uh, dude, I'm surprised they haven't already released it. I know, honestly, right? It's nighttime, and uh, everyone is just totally passed out wherever they were. Everybody's They're got their beer and sex partner. It's all good. <laughs> just all passed out on this, this like long couch dealy. Mike and Becky wake up, and they're like, oh, let's go to bed. So they go upstairs, and uh, they immediately hear something. And it's, oh, it's probably just the wind. And then Mike takes off his shirt and then he takes charge of this movie because then we hear even more rustling outside. And man, he takes off going to kick some ass <laughs> running around the place. <laughs> boop, 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 boop. Man, I got so charged up from this moment. <laughs> punching like, my fucking you were like, face. Oh, this is hot. Ooh. <laughs> I gotta take my shirt off. Um, and then it's and then he doesn't find anything. Next day, we just cut. And I wrote in my notes. I wrote in my notes. Fucking finally get some gnarly skiing footage, water skiing footage. This isn't this isn't iced, everybody. This is Blood Lake. But I wrote in my notes. It looks like I wrote fucking anally because I started to write the wrong words. So I don't know what that means. But we get the the sweet Voyager song called "Feeling Free." Feeling free. What you need to know about these ski sequences is everyone gets their chance to ski. Yes, they do. Well, some, some of them not so well. Susan uh, doesn't really manage. But she gets a chance to try. She gets a chance. She tries. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. And we should probably mention that I don't know Susan's um, family or anything, like the real person, the actress, uh, Christy Willoughby, but she's like the least white person among them well that is the that is the confusing thing because this is an incredibly white oklahoma yes. cast but then not diverse christy christy <laughs> is though i mean I, I we do yeah we don't know her heritage yeah but she definitely seems like she's a person of color and she's hanging out with this group i don't know why or where she's from or how yeah. she came in contact or why she puts up with little tony we know that her and little tony go to school together <laughs> because she's heard tell of little tony and his oh escapade but it's just so cute because she sticks out just because this cast is so white. <laughs> it It's true. I mean, I really like oh Susan. God. I think that she's, I honestly think she's very adorable. She's a fine actress because she's being herself. I mean, she, she has like this real little kid energy. Like Tony has pervert kid energy, but Susan has little kid energy. Like where, where's the scene where she busts out the board games? Like I could just see her like playing freaking uh, pickup sticks or some shit. What's the one where you fill the 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 big plastic container with marbles and uh, and, and uh, toothpicks and you pull the toothpicks out and if you pull the last one and all the marbles fall down, you you lose. I don't know, but I want to play the game. It's fun. It's fun. Yeah, it it's like a marbly Jenga kind of game. It's fun. Her delivery is really interesting because I feel like all of the words sort of meld together into like a mm -hmm. super word. Um, 
back back earlier when um when uh, i think it's uh it's either mike or brian are recommending that little tony do the pretzel and his problem's over she responds to it with just this one word that is what do you do what do you do <laughs> I, uh, it's just all one i gotta listen for that That's... what do you do what do you do <laughs> The what do you do? It's, she's so cute. So, so they all go water skiing. This scene goes on forever. Forever, forever. Not <laughs> as some... long as the most important scene of the movie. <laughs> no, that's coming. They're like knocking fists. Mike and Brian are knocking fists. It's real cool. Everybody's yep. feeling free. Somebody uh, throws down the great line, um, quote, The water's great. It's just like glass. <laughs> that is incredible that's like those like totally yeah. nonsensical things you pick up from an adult and you just say the rest <laughs> of your life and you don't know what the hell it means uh then t- uh, unfortunately uh when uh brian and, and uh, mike are done skiing they're getting off their skis ah <sighs> tony says the immortal line you f words given up already throwing the home just keeping it real with the homophobic slurs sure. and i wrote in my notes barf yeah real good real classy but what would you expect from little tony little this tony is so on brand for little tony yeah it's it's what you'd expect oh, 1987 boy. little tony he's talking about he's he's using that f word he's talking about muff diving oh boy little tony <sighs> Uh, so Susan calls Tony a sicko, and I'm deservedly so. Yeah. And then they pick up Chuck and Dennis, and we get a freaking reprise <laughs> or a reprise. I'm not sure. Is it reprise of yeah. feeling free? And I wrote in my feeling notes, free. I wrote in my notes, I'm done. Like <laughs> I was so ready to tap out of this fucking movie. <laughs> And we're only like 20 minutes in or less. Oh no, it can't be only 20 minutes in. I swear to God, dude. <laughs> so there's a, there's a moment where uh, they decide to have Susan give it a whirl on the skis. Tony's encouraging her and he says the creepy, he calls her baby at one point, And it was so not right. It was so not right. He tells her, put your skis on. Your feet aren't big enough to go barefoot. And she says, what? And he says, oh, nothing. And I'm like, fuck. What do you do? What do you do? (laughs) Uh, So uh, she tries to ski. And while they're talking, someone infers that because Susan's so sassy and telling off Tony that they must have did it last night because she knows Tony so well. Exactly. And I'm like slashing my wrists repeatedly. (laughs) She tries to ski and she fails, which is fine because God knows I've never skied or tried to ski. (laughs) Yeah. I would, I would look exactly like Susan. Yes. She goes, she goes head over heels. Like, Uh like the freaking go Go's song. It's great. But here's the best part. Then she makes up this snake. So they get all prepped up to have her try to ski again, which takes a long time to get down, get the get the boat in the right place and get their skis under, get you ready. And sure enough, she sees this quote unquote snake and starts screaming her head off. Mm-hmm. There is no snake. I know she's a liar. I would have lied too because water skiing is scary. Mm-hmm. But it's time for sandwiches. And it's time for, because it's time for lunch. They have sandwiches. And then I wrote in my notes, time for some lake scenes with people who did not sign waivers to appear (laughs) in this film. Oh my God. So yeah, there's lots of just lake bums and like moms watching their kids play and people just soaking up them rays and fishing and shit. And everyone has lunch. It's great. (laughs) A lot of dry sandwiches in this crowd. Oh, my God. This sandwich tastes as dry as Lil Tony. (laughs) Ugh. Sorry. (laughs) That is when, finally, we get some action. Dennis and Chuck confronting the killer. He's like... Whoa. So, they go back to uh, Becky's lake house, right? Yep, exactly. And... And I don't, what is he doing? Do you know what the killer is doing? Snooping around the windows. So, so far as I could tell. So he's just snooping around. Yeah. Okay. Which is bizarre because he clearly has access to the interior of the home if he's storing food in the refrigerator. So why is he snooping? He's trying to get his miracle whip back so he can eat it. <laughs> ah. um, well, Chuck and, uh, Chuck and Dennis um, 
encounter him and they're like, hey, what do you do? And the killer (laughs) (laughs) runs away from the scene with these huge exaggerated steps like he's a fucking Looney Tune. It's ridiculous. (laughs) Here's the thing. We need to talk about the killer because, all right, we know who the killer is from almost the opening scene, right? Big big guy with a beer gut. We don't really know why he's doing what he does until later on. Um, The killer is... uh, He's played by someone named Tony, excuse me, Tiny. Tiny. It's not even Tony. It's Tiny Frazier, who is a professional uh, wrestler known as, uh, most commonly known as Uncle Elmer. What? Although he's also known as Tiny the Plowboy, uh, the Lone Ranger. Um, he, he wrestled oh, in... Wow. I mean, he wrestled in the WWF from 1985 wow. to 1986. So it was a real long run. Um, but he, he, I guess he, he wrestled at various points otherwise. Oh my God. He, he wrestled in WrestleMania 2 and Damn. lost to adorable Adrian Adonis, who I do not know. Anyway. Dude, this is incredible. No, I'm looking at pictures of him. This is great. Yeah, he's he's extre- this is a crazy thing. He's extremely tall. He is six foot ten inches tall. Jesus. That's fucking crazy. His build weight <laughs> is four hundred and twenty pounds, smoke up. That's so crazy. Oh my god, dude, we gotta give a shout out to our our fallen comrade Nafa, dude. If Nafa knew about this movie, he would be cutting in right now with all of the freaking all the uh, facts about tiny, all the tiny trivia, <laughs> all the tiny Fraser trivia. Oh my god! So he has an imposing frame for sure, but when he wears the outfits that he wears. Which, um, for most of this movie, he is wearing, it looks like a denim button-up with flower embroidery. Yes. Which, okay, so this is a really crazy thing, is that this movie has a credited uh, wardrobe person, which is insane. (laughs) Because it seems like everybody just wore, you know, wore on screen what they wore to the set. And that right. is, I found out, true for Tiny Frazier, who that was just his outfit. Okay. Oh, <laughs> and boy. it's very jarring because it does not feel like something that this killer should be wearing nope. alongside his, his huge hat. So in silhouette, he looks extremely imposing, uh, as he does on the uh, the cover of this film, the, you know, the, uh, the key artwork. But... Whenever we see him with any sort of clarity, like light, say, (laughs) he does not look at all intimidating. And when he's running away, as he does here, like a Looney Tunes character, it is again like, oh, man, this is our this is our guy. All right. Mm. Yes, he he is actually who Kurt Cobain was singing about when he sang come as you are. (laughs) He came as he was. And now we accept it. We have no choice. Yeah, this is the the most epic trash talking ever. Like these two little teenage boys just shouting at a grown man, uh, like "We'll kick your ass, we'll kick your back here, we'll kick your ass, we'll kick." It was so great, especially because they definitely would not kick his ass, <laughs> as evidenced by their horrific murder. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that that's that that's good evidence. Sam started running, not marathons, but he is taking his health more seriously. And so am I. I buy more fruit and skip the cookie aisle. And I've switched from mayonnaise to Miracle Whip salad dressing. It has 36% less fat, 30% fewer calories than mayonnaise, even low cholesterol. Plus, Miracle Whip has that tangy zip. And Sam takes that seriously, too. Make a change for the better to Miracle Whip. One, two, three, go. Go. Go, y'all. It's time to smoke some more Maui Waui Granddaddy Perp Kush freaking ancient <laughs> thunder lettuce marijuana. I think it's more like Okie Wokie. Okie Wokie. <laughs> yeah, there's so much weed in this movie, man. I could I'll just think of Simon and I putting on our green sweaters, <laughs> talking about idle hands. Oh man. Uh so then we have the the piece de resistance. <laughs> the most wonderful moment is a scene which does not seem as though it was edited 
at all. Oh no, it is just one static shot for with like 10 minutes. Some fade-ins and fade out. They cut, they decided not to go with the jump cuts because that looked a little too jarring. <laughs> so they do some fade-ins and fade out super quick, but they play quarters. Like they suggest playing quarters and everyone goes, uh, quarters. The girls are like, nah, uh, and that's when you as a viewer should be going, nah, uh, don't, <laughs> please. This is five and a half minutes of film time that is seriously just real drinking, playing quarters. Oh my God. Did you actually time it? No, someone had ripped it from the movie and they put it up oh, on okay. YouTube as like, the best scene well, in Blood Lake or something like that. I forget how they labeled can't it. Can't disagree. And it was five and a half minutes long. Uh, yeah. Everyone is talking at once. And I was literally begging for a montage. <laughs> like, let's let's fire up that feeling free song again. <laughs> Just let's Be- just get Begging this. for beer pong. Like yeah. something kinetic, right? <laughs> Please. One time uh, we played a gig at uh, this horrible nightclub that is now gone called Insomniacs. And uh, as we were going to play, uh, they brought out these tables and set up tables right in front of the stage. And then we all had to perform, all the bands had to perform while these creepy scumbags played beer pong literally feet from the stage like to see the bands you had to look past the people playing beer pong it was very intimidating weird it was i like when people ignore my band like people would just just ignore you or do the the tampa arm folding dance (laughs) where they just stand there and just fold their arms and and stare at you that's fine no reaction is good people playing beer pong at you is fucking really disturbing (laughs) Uh, <laughs> playing it at you that would be that's yeah that would have been better just just pong in me so this goes on for a long time everybody gets drunk including our our buds uh chuck and dennis and as they're leaving that's when they relate oh by the way we fucking verbally abused a crazy man <laughs> whoops <laughs> And so they tell them about Becky about the killer, about the guy, and they describe him as a real pizza face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we only support meatball faces around here. Oh my god, dude, it's so good. They, they just can't get over how ugly he is, man. Oh my god. Mike gets so angry. Mike gets so mad thinking about this guy that... He, you can like see him bristling with how fucking mad he wanted to kill this guy. It's so funny. Uh, so while all this quarter shit is going on, that's when my brain was like, where's Tony and Susan? And that's when they pan out or they couldn't afford to pan out. They just cut mm. to a different shot. And there's Tony and Susan literally laying face down on the fucking carpet. <laughs> passed out. <laughs> I love that. It's such a great reveal. Like, where are those characters? Oh, fuck. Of course, that's where they are. Listen, that's just what you do at the lake house. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know what I mean. Oh, boy. Susan and Tony go off to bed. There's more terribleness inferring that they're going to hook up. <laughs> and I want to slam my fingers in a drawer until I can't see this fucking movie anymore. <laughs> uh, but then <laughs> Chuck and Dennis go fishing. Hey man, you're gonna fish out fish now. Hey, we'll go for now, man. We'll go tomorrow. What do you do? What do you do? And what, they go what do fishing. You do? <laughs> do some night fishing. And uh, this is my favorite conversation in the movie out of all the many of my favorites in this movie, where they're like, man, as they're fishing, Chuck and Dennis, man, we should have brought some chicks with us. Duh. <laughs> Next time we can't depend on women to be here. <laughs> and they talk about how fine Becky is and they're almost respectful. Like it's compared to all the bullshit of the other guys. <laughs> these guys are kind of innocent about it a little bit. I'm not sure. I, I kind of got lost in the fishing. Oh, what, what do they say? No, I really don't know. You don't know. I just know that they, right. they definitely lament that we should have, they literally say we should have brought chicks with us. And then the killer shows up. We're, do you think they were expecting to like fish women out of the lake? <laughs> That's where women come from. Mm-hmm. Like either they come from Cedar Lake or they come from the internet. <laughs> Those Russian mail order Cedar Lake, Lake bum brides. Anyway, <laughs> the killer shows up and uh, there's a great moment where uh, Chuck is like, <laughs> 
I'm gonna just fucking swim away. He jumps in the water and swims away. Killer just waving the knife, waving the knife. Finally, Dennis is like, or I'm fucking losing these people. He yeah, jumps I have no idea which one is which. Sorry, I don't know why I pretended to know. So he starts <laughs> drowning him with with his other hand, the the not knife hand. Starts drowning him while the other guy's swimming away, and he slashes his throat, and then somehow the killer catches up to the swimming dude. And and captures him, and then things get kinky. Oh yeah, it's like uh, some Freddy Krueger material. Mm-hmm. Stroking the knife on the face while he's tied to a tree with a gag in his mouth. Style. Oh yeah, it's, it it made me a little uncomfortable. I was like, hmm, what's where's this going? <laughs> yeah, this ends up being the killer's thing, right? It's his mo. He yes. likes to tie people up oh, and then like stroke them with a knife. And Ugh. then maybe kill them, maybe. Maybe. So he definitely murdelates him. He stabs yeah. him, and it's the next morning. We have a nice picturesque shot of ducks swimming ducks in the, on the a beautiful lake. sunrise. Oh man! And the shot holds too long because <laughs> it had to 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 make that uh, you know eighty two minute running time. Well, also apparently because the um, the director of this film, Tim Boggs, uh, he went to art school. Oh. And he mm. stayed up all night so that he could get that shot Aww. of ducks on the lake because he he really wanted this to be something special. Didn't turn out that way. He fully admits that, but he wanted it to be that. Uh, hey, that's a beautiful shot. He nailed it. I love it. Yeah, I, I I like it too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but we do find out that Mike is wearing the same shorts. He wears the same shorts this entire movie, so he does not change his clothes. Very They're scary. Only there for three days. Those, those are three day shorts. Oh boy! <laughs> I hope I hope there's salt water in the lake to kind of clean them a little bit. No, there's, but, there's no cleaning that. Damn it! Uh, so. Lake Patrol shows up, and oh boy, my favorite character next to <laughs> Lil Tony and all the other characters, mumble motherfucker, Lake Patrol guy. <laughs> oh my god, this guy, he brings the movie audio wise to a complete stand. So <laughs> you have to struggle to understand a word of this guy's dialogue. It's so fun. It's just a guy dressed like a cowboy with a freaking badge on. Very well, official he- looking character. I don't know. I've never seen anything like this before. I mean, I just called the sheriff on the two-way, and he'll be here in a minute. He'll probably want to ask you some questions about it. Here's the other thing I feel is that once Lake Patrolman enters the movie, the energy just goes way down. When the the characters discover that that these dudes who they're friends with have been murdered, the movie just kind of changes. Yeah, they see so like the Lake Patrol man and I think it's Mike, right? Yeah. They um they notice that Dennis is strung up dead in a tree over um over yonder. And the the response is just so nonplussed. It's like, mm-hmm. "Oh man. Yeah, uh, that's him." I think Mike says, "I don't understand this shit, man." <laughs> or something to that effect. And it's This is confusing. Oh boy. Becky when she finds out, she's she's very distraught. She gets like a little after school special moment here. This would be on her demo reel <laughs> had she sure. kept going in the acting world. And uh the, the cops want the kids to stick around. So, they can't leave. <laughs> There have been two murders within walking distance, swimming distance, <laughs> of this freaking lake house. And the cops, who, there's no police presence because they couldn't afford the cops. That They have no police presence. They have to stay there. That's how <clears throat> wonderful this movie is structured. That they just, well, we can't afford cops, so you got to hang out till you get killed. Dude. Oh, my Listen, God. R- Richard, as Mike <sighs> says, it's no big deal. Just, it is no big deal. <laughs> so people die. It happens every day. Uh, we have a scare where uh, they're they're about to have more lunch, and uh, Brian and Kim have disappeared. Nope, they're okay. They're just out there sunning themselves, and so we're getting ready for another round of partying. Another just another day in the cycle of life of our Wonder Bread people here. <laughs> And uh, my fucking favorite marijuana part happens. Brian and Kim, who are basically just the potheads of the movie, because they they just well, they're like Pavlov's dogs with the mm. marijuana. As soon as they're sitting 
indoors, they start smoking weed. Uh, 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 Kim says, hand me the joint, man, and then blurts out this stupid, like, <laughs> laugh. <laughs> and I cried laughing. I kept rewinding that part. Hand me the <laughs> joint, man. <laughs> I will play it. I hope it's as funny Please. to you as it is to me. I love that moment. She cracks me up. <laughs> Holy shit. Hit me the joint, man. <laughs> but then we have some drama. Shit gets real. Shit gets like a uh, fucking real world road rules challenge fucking real. <laughs> Where uh, that's Brian... That, damn, and- that's real. <laughs> <laughs> Brian and Kim want to go for a walk. And uh, Mike, with a head on his shoulders, is like, don't fucking go out. You're you're going to get murdered. You're There's a die. murderer. Yeah. And they get into this little blowout that is so, like, you could analyze this in a film class and they <laughs> wouldn't know what the fuck happens here. It's so good. Yeah. Everything gets super tense and Mike's about to, like, punch the wall. He's so angry. And then Brian and Kim just go. And, like, and Mike's like, Brian's weird. He's always doing that shit, man. <laughs> So we get the two of them, they sneak out on the boat, and they start cruising around to the freaking <laughs> saxophone pops on the love, the, the what is it called, a power ballad kind of a deal. It's not really a, a proper power ballad, because it power ballads like get you pumped up, and this one just sucks the life right out of you. It's, it's the uh, power ballad on that Maui Wowie. Yeah, on that freaking purple sticky punch, boy. I feel like this whole sequence is nearly unwatchable because of how dark it is. Yes. I mean, this is not day for Narda. This is just <laughs> night for Narda. Pitch black Oklahoma yeah. darkness. <laughs> <laughs> so they go, they go, they find a nice secluded spot with the boat to go and, and make sweet whoopee. Make the sex act, as we call it here on the Doom Show. In case you're just tuning in. I'm sorry. Uh, but while they're about to get started or have gotten started, the ducks in the lake with the real sound are just <laughs> narrating their fucking. It's so good. <laughs> 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 the killer strikes and then stabs them. I think he slashes uh, yeah. Brian's throat and there's lots of and screaming. Squir- it, squirts in our, it squirts in Kim's eyeball, the oh. blood from his artery. It's, that's the like only good like gore effect. Man, there's 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 lots of blood in this, and there's there's some slashes, but yeah, that part. Mm, lots of blood. <laughs> well, lots of t-shirts stained with blood. You know what's funny? Speaking of being little Tony's age. Uh, the blood on the shirts reminded me of the, if I can find a picture of this t-shirt, I will add it to the art of this episode. I had a t-shirt that was advertising a shark attack of some kind. <laughs> oh no! I don't know if it was for a game or it was just a clever t-shirt designed by somebody, but it was a white t-shirt splattered with blood, like neon red, almost purple blood all over it. Every square inch of the shirt was just like heavy with paint. But they had the clever idea of also cutting holes in the shirt and ripping Mm, it to make it look like the person had survived a shark attack. So I had that shirt for many years. It was pretty freaking bitching. Here's the thing. Did you wear it? All the time. All the time? Yeah. I wore it it, until it fell apart. Everybody was seeing the grievous wounds under Mm -hmm. your, uh, your shirt and your skin. Yep. Yep. My, my, my beautiful naked flesh, little Ricky. That's me, <laughs> little, little Ricky. He's a pervert. I did not have a reputation. Most people just wanted to punch me in the face when they saw me. Just like now. <laughs> Hand me the joint, man. <laughs> Nothing has changed. Nope, nope. Uh, I'm cruising for a bruising and I'm begging for a beating. Mm. So- I'm hanging 20. <laughs> <laughs> hanging 420. Whoa. Wah, wah. So the killer strikes, like we were saying, uh, to, to add some artfulness to this this murder scene, uh, there's a slow motion shot of one of the most horrific spiders I've ever seen. Mm. So I am not afraid of spiders. I don't want them on me. Like if I'm, yeah. it's Florida, come on. But we have these spiders in Florida and they are terrifying because they look mean. And when they jump, they vanish because they jump so fast. So you don't know where they've landed. 
They are so creepy. And he very, uh, our, our director here, very uh, smartly filmed it in slow motion <laughs> to yeah. capture its, all of its glory. But yeah, because it's, it's like a metaphor for the killer <laughs> with his eight. He's coming at you very slowly. No, <laughs> his, his, uh, his eight legs. Oh. Uh-oh. His eight very long legs. Tiny. There are moments when I wish this was a video podcast. I have a visitor. I've got a Gorgon. Speaking of toothless creatures, we got Gorgon. She's as dangerous as this killer without her fucking teeth. Hey, Gorgon. What do you do? <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> Hand me that joint, man. <laughs> Come on. Now she's just standing on my notes. All right. Mike goes out looking for our, our missing lovers. I mean, I, I, oh, I was I was just mixing up which pairs of lovers I was talking about here, but no, uh, this is this is uh, not Chuck and Dennis. This is Brian and Kim we're looking for, mm-hmm. uh, and there's two witnesses: <laughs> a guy and his kid who are out doing some night fishing. The two of them describing the couple making lots of noise. Yeah, they were. Oh, yeah, we saw them. They were they were over there. They're making lots of noise. Yeah, they were quacking and stuff. <laughs> Mike finds their bodies, and then the killer uh, heads to the house where uh, our remaining people are alive and are in danger. And this is when my notes stop, is when uh, this movie kicks into high gear. So we we'll have to wing this part. Oh, your notes stop there? Oh, yeah, boy. dude. I, 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 didn't, I was too lazy to get out a fourth sheet of paper. <laughs> well, I know that at one point he captures both Becky and Tony, and he strings them up as yep. he is wont to do. And Mike barges in. I think they're in the barn, right? Yeah, because Susie yeah. actually runs for it. Susie like makes a break for it. Yeah, yeah, because she doesn't show up again until the end. Smart Susie. Tony and Becky are strung up in the barn, which I guess is where the killer is living most of the time. Yep, and that's where the body of the gardener is kept. Yes, yes, because he disappeared too. And then uh, Mike, I don't know, he finds it and he goes in there and uh, (laughs) he gets into a fight with the killer. Right. Yeah. Uh, he, 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 Becky gets stabbed. Yes. And you she, think you think Becky's done for, but she's holding on, man. She seems pretty dead. I mean, they sort of treat her like, well, she might be dead. She might not be dead. Well, she lived a good life. <laughs> the production value is uh, the the ambulance that's going to come. But uh, my uh, Mike, he gets the upper hand on the killer by bashing his head into the side of the the, the shed wall there, and then he gets the knife and just stabs the living bejesus out of our uh, our killer yeah a bunch of times right in the back um, oh yeah oh, boy. And it seems seems like that's it for him uh. <laughs> and then lake patrolman comes right yep. and he calls the ambulance and <laughs> there's a great exchange once uh, <laughs> uh the lake patrolman and the ambulance are there <laughs> where um i think this is the lake patrolman who asks uh mike what the hell happened? And Mike just says, I don't know. That guy over there started freaking out, trying oh, to kill everybody. What do you do? What do you do? <laughs> what do you do? I don't know. <laughs> oh, but then Again, they, they, super nonchalant. Uh, and then the money of the budget went to this ambulance. They actually yeah. got an ambulance and two EMTs to come out to this lake house and act in the movie. And it's not even just like a van that they put like some lights on. It's a real ambulance. Well, it's legit. That's where the that's where the money goes. And then uh, as soon as they get uh, Becky inside, they're taking everybody away. That's when the lake patrol man sees that the body of the killer has disappeared. And he chases after them. He's literally running after this ambulance as it's disappearing into nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we also learned so during this scene the um the killer's emma or like justification his rationale for the killings like we didn't actually know it before now uh we learned that becky's father you know did his whole scam <laughs> and uh in response to that mike says wait so it got ripped off so he's gonna kill everybody and the lake patrolman just goes yeah i guess <laughs> oh, i don't know well what do you do <laughs> oh my god it's so good and that's when the, the ambulance drives off into the distance. Very, very, very long into the distance. And we get the credits. No, wait. This movie no. isn't over yet. Mm-mm. We get uh, some nice rock and roll. We get the, the Blood Lake song by Voyager. 
we get our killer who has oh, disappeared. My oh my god. He disappears, but apparently he dies because he is now like a ghost. He phases through the barn door and wow. then begins to walk towards the lake. Yes, but and this dis- is sorry, I'm just so excited. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. He's in the freaking like the nega version like the the freaking uh the bizarro version the the hellscape like the 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 drained river sticks or some shit yeah or, or he's on blood lake but now it's just dry lake because it's gone s- now i don't know i think there's a credit in yeah. the oh, oh yeah a, about uh the act of god that d- that just drained the lake so for some reason <laughs> well, cedar specifically lake, dry lake special visual effects by an act, an act of, of God. God. <laughs> but and it, here's uh, here's the thing. I have no idea how this actually happened, though. Like, from listening to all of the special features, there's no explanation of how this lake just dried up. This seemed like a pretty substantial lake, and it's just yeah. gone. Yeah. It's like, I don't think a drought would have made it this no. completely dry. Unless it took, like, years for them to finish the film, and they were like... Oh, we need to do some pickup shots. Okay. Oh shit! The no, lake there was is only a, there was a year between when they filmed it and when it was edited, but weird. just a year. That is so weird. Very I'll have to strange. call. I'll call up Cedar Lake and see what they say. Mm-hmm. But uh, this sequence was the final, the final nail in the coffin for me. Our killer wandering around, just wandering around the drained lake with this song playing, and I was like, please stop. Yeah, it's it's like it's a real pan zoom oh. repeat sequence. It like it goes on for the in, almost the entirety of the song. Uh, it's it's it's. I mean, it's a cool sight. They made the most this of dried it. up lake. I did find out from the um, the commentary that the director took pictures of this as well, like you know, uh, you know, some film pictures, and then sent them along with a story uh, like an article about the dried up lake to the weekly world news Mm -hmm. you know they they have bat boy yeah um and uh, they published it and paid him some money for his uh his photos um which the article which apparently they totally rewrote was uh, about how a film crew came to this oklahoma town and filmed their their horror movie and they were all like cultists and because of that god had had smote the area um yeah apparently apparently that was what a lot of the uh residents of uh cedar cedar lake it's called yeah uh, Cedar Lake felt about this film production. Um, so he, he sort of dramatized that for the Weekly World News. And he said that uh, this was the uh, that what the Weekly World News paid was the only money he made off the film, <laughs> which is excellent. Oh, that makes so much sense. I love yeah. it. Wow. 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 Did you have any other uh, trivia about uh, Delicious Blood Lake? The only other bit of trivia is that I thought was notable because it's insane is that um, the first victim, the gardener, was actually the uh, <laughs> was the director's wife's ex husband, uh, <laughs> huh. who then you know he uh, she eventually became his ex wife too. So they shared that in common. That's bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> this movie cost six thousand dollars. That's mm. it. Okay. Six thousand. Three of that apparently for post and three for production. Wow. Um so I'm assuming that the other like the three for production went went towards mostly that ambulance. Yeah, this is this is this might be the least expensive film that we've ever covered, maybe in existence. I mean, that is such a low number. Yeah, and, and the fact that they never made any money back on it, even with the video <laughs> rental, like <laughs> even people just taking a chance on the cover art wasn't enough I to know. recoup. That's crazy. I, I don't know how rare this tape is. I don't know if, if you if it's you've a looked for this one. Rare one. It's yeah, okay. it's rare. It's gotcha. rare. Gotcha. That would probably contribute to it. <laughs> Yeah. Bad distribution after the well, fact. Well, they, they got a decent dis- distribution deal. The director talks about um, how he went to a video store in Hollywood and and found Blood Lake there and was like, ah, I've made it. Aw, um, that's amazing. But it was in video stores, but it might not have been a lot of copies in video <laughs> stores. Let's say that <laughs> it didn't. It didn't. Uh, didn't make any waves at the, didn't, the, didn't pull the bloody a, lake of the video store. Yeah, it wasn't pulling Titanic numbers. Right 
So Jeffrey, uh, how do you like Bloodlight? <clears throat> um, I feel like it is is pretty unique among SOV horror movies in that again it does not really necessarily feel for most of its running time at all like a movie. <laughs> it feels like you're watching a home video of these people who are not necessarily likable, but they are recognizable. Yeah. Um, you know. Sledgehammer, another one of these SOV films that we've covered, has similar scenes. I mean, you were talking to me about how it feels like they could have been filmed like in the same general area of, of uh, space and time. Yes. But Sledgehammer, even when they're just like hanging out, like it feels like there's maybe a purpose to it. And sometimes it's it's downright surreal, like when they're doing their food fight. Yeah. Nothing like that happens in Blood Lake. It is just like tedium. It is. It is just people hanging out doing sometimes cool things like the uh, I mean, I, I think that the uh, uh, the water skiing is fairly well filmed and it's as exciting as watching other people water ski uh, can be. Um, but then other times it's just nothing. It's just people sleeping. It's people playing quarters. It's people <laughs> smoking weed, drinking beers. What do you do? I like this movie a lot. It is. I would call it a balm film, B-A-L-M. That is a film that is just simply relaxing. You put it on, <laughs> you zone out, you're on the couch, you're lying down, you have to be horizontal, that's pretty important, and you just let it wash over <laughs> you. It's, you know, it's not a genre of film that you can always just jump into. Um, I think you need to be in the right mindset, but if you need a good summer balm, I think this one will do the job. <laughs> Uh, how do you like this one, Richard? I, I was uh, rewatching it and then uh, talking to you. I was like, "Ooh, you might not like this one." <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I'm gonna say I don't like Blood Lake. Uh, I would say watching it once was was fine. <laughs> Taking notes on it, and this is something that every time I don't enjoy a film that we cover on this show, mm -hmm. try to take it with a grain of salt that I am trying to keep track of what we're doing and what we're going to talk about. <laughs> try to write down some jokes. Cause I'm so funny. <laughs> uh, Henry, the joint man. <laughs> and uh, just takes a little of my enjoyment out to have to take notes. Sure. If this wasn't two and a half hours long, like it is at 80 minutes, <laughs> I would have enjoyed this a lot more. Uh, the, the music is totally bitchin'. Even the farty synths, hilarious. <laughs> the the bitchin' guitar solos from Voyager are just so. The dude kind of has the same guitar solo style in a different key. Not that I'm a great musician, but it's basically the same guitar solo solo at a different tempo and key. It's very mm. funny to hear this. Um, the wistful kind of nostalgic piano kicks in. I just want to put my head in my hands. <laughs> like we were saying, this is the most realistic film. We were, we will never cover a film more real than this on the doom show. <laughs> if you're I've been there, <laughs> I've been little Tony. <laughs> if you're into SOV films, you will get enjoyment out of this. I will say that, uh, this is not a waste of time. As much as it tries to waste your time, <laughs> the reason there wasn't a food fight in this is because they didn't want to clean up. They didn't. They couldn't afford the resolve, you know, carpet <laughs> cleaner to get the food fight out. So that's yeah, why I think, the sledgehammer. I think Mr. Is... Darter would have been very mad. <laughs> that's why sledgehammer had the bigger budget because they could afford a, a bottle of resolve to get the food out of the carpet. There's a moment early on in the film where one of the characters uh, commenting upon once they've arrived at the uh, cabin and they recognize that it's fairly low tech at that place. They say, oh man, it's going to be a very long three days. And I feel like you could sub out that dialogue. Uh, you could ADR it out like Tim Boggs has spent the rest of his career doing uh, with, <laughs> oh man, it's going to be a very long 
one hour and 21 minutes. <laughs> and uh, that would be accurate. Um, I'm not complaining because um, I like a very long hour and 21 minutes, but approach with caution, let's yeah. say. This will definitely put you in the summer mood. If, if Break this out in the middle of winter and you'll, <laughs> you'll get hot. For sure. I do appreciate that there was no nudity in this that I could see at least yeah. <laughs> other than guys taking their shirts off. That would have added a, a layer of bleh to a, a, an ew. You know, like mm-hmm. we would have gone from ew to bleh. So. <laughs> gone from ew to what to do. <laughs> the joy man <laughs> ah bless it so folks we got one more film in our freaking uh our summer sov series and uh <laughs> it is it's not a blood lake and we're gonna be talking about blood cult and you have not seen this one no right? I, I i owned a copy of it never watched it sold it and then <laughs> had to download it see i have not seen it either so i have no idea what to expect here i've i've read some good reviews of it I don't mean like the movie's good. I mean, the review I read many years ago is very entertaining. Uh, oh, yeah. Gotcha. We should do a shout out to Bleeding Skull. Uh, Bleeding Skull did cover um, all of these movies in uh, of course. their first book, uh, the, the 80s uh, trash film Odyssey, which finally they've announced the date for their 1990s book, which I'm very excited about. It's going to be crazy. Yeah, honestly, I <laughs> what what treasures are going to be unveiled in that book? Uh, things you will pick for the doom show. (laughs) Absolutely. Plan on it. (laughs) Oh man. Well, sir, thank you so much for joining me. This would have been very strange to go water skiing by myself without you. I'm just glad you weren't a butthole. (laughs) Nope. Not all summer or not (laughs) all weekend. (laughs) If you'll excuse me, I'm going to go do the pretzel and uh, (laughs) find my sex partner. (laughs) You sicko. You're a little pervert. (laughs) Bye, folks. Hello, This is the Doom Show is a proud member of the Legion Podcast Network. Please check out the other podcasts on legionpodcasts.com. If you'd like more Hello, This is the Doom Show, go to hellodoomshow.podomatic.com or go to doomedmoviethon.com for the archives. If that's still not enough, go to at doomedmoviethon on Twitter. You can write in to Hello, This is the Doom Show, use the email doomedmoviethon at gmail.com. Doom Show episodes are available on record and 8-track cassette. If you enjoyed this show, then make sure you check out the other great shows on the Legion Podcast Network, like Cinema PsyOps, Cinema Beef, Devour the Podcasts, Duncan and Bo Come Correct, Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, Friday the 13th, Get Slayed, The Hell Ming Power Hour, Hello, This is the Doom Show, Hero Hero Ghost Show, Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Jerry Hates Action, Legion After Dark, Mental Health, Obsessive Cinema, Discourse, Pick 6 Movies, The Podcast by the Cemetery, The Podcast on Haunted Hill, The Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shade Cast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Which vs. the Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found.